Many horse riders own a pair of spurs. Spurs strap onto the heels of your boots. Each spur has a small, sometimes spike wheel, which is employed to prod the horse to get it to move or move faster. That's when a kind word or a sugar lump doesn't do the trick, of course. The anatomy of a spur is elementary. The wheel, called the rowel, is mounted in the shank. The shank is connected to the heel band and held to the boot by a leather strap. The metal parts are made from a strong yet flexible type of steel. First, a computer-guided laser cuts the starting shape for the heel bands. A quick strike of a press stamps them with the company name. Workers smooth and bevel the edges using a sander fitted with a special belt for grinding metal. Next, they hammer the piece around a steel block, cushioning the blows with a piece of wood to avoid marring the surface. The block is shaped exactly like the heel of the boots for which the spurs have been ordered, ensuring a custom fit. They heat evenly with a torch. This relaxes the steel around the block so that the heel band permanently takes the shape. Then some final taps to lay the band completely flat against the block. This perfects the shape. They submerge the heel band in cool water. This tempers the flexible steel, rendering it hard and stiff. Then with a fine grip belt, they sand away any surface imperfections. A pair of spurs is made up of some 24 steel pieces, all of which go through the same preparation as the heel band. Once all the parts are ready, workers precision weld the shank to the midpoint of the heel band. Next, to each side of the heel band, they weld a pin which holds a pivoting arm. These swing arms, as they're called, hold the leather strap which retains the spur to the boot. To make the rounds, they trace a template on steel, then cut along the lines with a metal bandsaw. If the rowel shape is elaborate, a computer-guided laser cuts them out. After sanding the rowel thoroughly to smooth the sharp edges which could cut the horse, they mount it to the shank with a stainless steel pin. Then they weld the back of the pin. Now the artistry starts. A craftsman creates decorative overlays in sterling silver. He then cuts their shapes with a jeweler's awl, draws a design, and using an array of engraving tools, meticulously carves it out. He cleans the back of the overlays with flux, an acidic chemical, then coats them with solder. The trick is to apply just enough to bond the silver to the steel. Too much would overflow and ruin the front. By the time he applies each overlay to the spur, the solder has cooled and solidified. So he warms the steel with a torch from underneath. This reheats and liquefies the solder, which then cools and re-solidifies, bonding the silver to the steel. Once all the silver overlays are soldered to the spur, workers polish them on a cloth buffing wheel. For a finishing touch, they submerge the spurs in a tank containing a chemical solution called gun bluing. It turns the shiny steel parts black. To produce an antique brown rather than black finish, the workers heat the spurs in an oven, then apply a chemical which tints the steel. Now for the leather straps. The craftsman styles the leather entirely by hand, dyes it, attaches a stainless steel buckle, then sews tabs on both ends, which hook to the swing arms on the heel band. This shiny set of spurs is now ready for some horsing around.